Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm in Chertsey today, Chertsey in Surrey, and I'm walking along in a man-made linear cutting in the ground. But no, I'm not in an old railway cutting, or an old canal for that matter. Although there would have once been water up to about here. I'm in one of the old fish ponds of Chertsey Abbey. We're going to explore what we can of the site of Chertsey Abbey, have a little look in the town, and then we're going to go up to the mysterious St Anne's Hill, which is just above the town. So as I come up out this fish pond, I must be in what was the Abbey Farm. The site of the Abbey was over there. Go and have a look at that in a minute. But that's one fish pond, which has got hazel all alongside it. If we come over here through these gardens, have a look at the cherry blossom. Really looks nice at this time of year. We'll have a look through these gardens. We can see two more fish ponds. There's a big eucalyptus tree there. Here's two more fish ponds, which um, don't have hazel around the side of them. And just over there is the moat, which was once covered what I assume must have been the Abbey Farm, where we have now a Victorian house. Possibly there was a farmhouse of, or some form of farm buildings, but just have a look. There's the other two fish ponds. Now, if we go out behind this tree, which has been a bit propped up here, we go over a little gate, through a gate, over a bridge, over a small bridge, and um, we have a similar looking cutting in the ground. This was the moat of part of the Abbey site. And you see up there, this was a ditch that runs along there because just over here is the Abbey River and um, just over there is the M3, but we're not so interested in that. So we're gonna walk along here. We're gonna go and find what we can of the Abbey. There's not a lot in the way of ruins, but there seems to be quite a lot in the way of earthworks. So this is the Abbey River it's a distributary of the River Thames. So upstream that way, it comes off the Thames, but downstream that way, it joins the Thames. So what I'm not sure about, and somebody may like to comment and tell me is, was that a natural river? It looks pretty natural to me. And they just built the Abbey here because it was convenient, or did the monks build the river? Certainly the moat would have been built by the monks. So the, the history of the Abbey goes back, um, a long, long time, as most Abbey's histories do, but um, the first significant um, piece of history in the Abbey, it would have been an old sort of wooden construction, nothing too special, nothing fancy, but in about the year of 871, it was sacked by the Vikings and they slaughtered the monks, about 50 of them, so quite a sad, sad thing to happen. And then it was quite a while later, in um, the year of 9... 64 or 63 around that time monks from Abingdon came um, that's another place you should go but the monks from Abingdon came here they re-established the abbey so it may have been those monks who dug the ditches and the ponds but they brought the abbey back to life let's let's go down into the into the moat so where I started was just over there behind that tree I'm now in the abbey moat so the plan in today's video show you the abbey there's not a lot to see of the abbey so that's why I said we'll go up to St Anne's Hill. We'll also have a quick look around the town centre. Um, I'm going to go and visit the station because I'm expecting a steam train to pass through. That will be on a separate video, or I might put a little clip in this video. So we're just walking through this moat. We go up here. There's something up here. Um, not monastic, but um, a little bit interesting. It looks as though here, here we have some form of ornamental pond I'm not sure when that was but perhaps they had like a little water flowing maybe maybe there was a little cascade down there um, but that's obviously not working doesn't look like it's worked for a while what we can see at the abbey is over here or really what I should say is what we see are some um, outside walls the whole side of the abbey is private so we can't go in there I believe quite a few tiles survive there in Chertsey Museum which due to current restrictions is closed so we can't go there but I will point out to you so if you're watching this video in like a year's time then you want to do this you'll be able to go to the museum I have been in the museum it's got a very very small model railway as well which is quite cool so here we have a section of wall now I'm not sure if this wall is original or if it's been rebuilt by Victorians it's probably a bit of both and then these stones here mark the wall you can see the wall goes along here so these are some of the only monastic walls. The actual abbey itself was over there on the other side of that wall. So um, I would say that's possibly original. This corner here 
But um, if you're looking for an abbey with big high ruined walls, well, this is as high as you're going to get. It's not one of those abbeys, you know, like Tinton um, or Croxton or, you know, one with big ruined walls. But still, I just like to come to these places. It's very peaceful, it's slightly noisy because they're mowing the grass, but very peaceful and just outside the town. You could come here by train. I didn't. I parked my car in the car park just over there. Um, but we are going to the station to see a steam train. So we're now going to walk along here. So the site of the abbey would have been just behind this wall here. So we, we can't go in. It's now, um, looks like some form of car maintenance garage. So we're not going to go in there. But this is a public footpath down here. This barn, I wonder if that's anything to do with the abbey. And um, what looks like possibly is through the abbey is this old gateway here. I'd say those walls are original monastic and it's, it's been filled in, so obviously that's later. It was the Benedictine Monastery, if anyone's wondering what order it was. Now we come through here, behind that barn, there's a dovecote. But if you want a real surprise, a form of animal you probably really were not expecting to see on this video, um, we're coming back to the Abbey River. Here we have the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, very, very strange thing to find here. Well, that Loch Ness Monster used to be at Fort Park, which of course isn't far away from here. Um, so the Loch Ness Monster was there. They obviously didn't want it anymore. So Loch Ness Monster's ended up here, overlooking the Abbey River. I'm now going to go back into Chertsey. Like I said, I'll show you the museum, a couple of things in town centre, and then we're gonna go up to St Anne's Hill. I'm now walking through the final section of the Abbey Moat. So what you have above my head just here, this is Abbey Field, um, which is currently being mown. See the Victorian house just there. So that's where we started the video, behind that hedge. Now coming towards the end of the ditch, we're gonna go and I'm gonna point out Chertsey Museum. So like I said, if you do come here and you wanna know even more about the Abbey, see some of the tiles, etc. Churchy Museum is the place to go. So where is Church? Here, here we are. So we come out here onto a busier road. We're going into the town centre now. It's this building here, that one there, that's Churchy Museum. So like I said, when um, things are a bit more normal again, it's nice we can travel again, but when we can travel and go indoors again, go and visit them. It's a good little museum. And um, now I'm going to go and look around the town, see the steam train, and then, as I said, we're going up to St Anne's Hill. So there you are, it's Chertsey Museum. That's St Peter's Church, so that's the parish church for Chertsey. I'm going to go down Guildford Street, just here. This is Windsor Street, just down there. There's the old town hall. I'm going to head down here to the railway station. So I'm beginning to make my way up St Anne's here. Everything's St Anne's here. You've got St Anne's Lodge there, St Anne's Cottage. This is where we're going, St Anne's Hill Public Park. So I'm quite excited about going up here to have a look. I've, I've been to Chertsey quite a lot of times, either to see a steam train or sometimes I've just been driving this way. I've perhaps stopped here to have a coffee on the way home. Never ever been up St Anne's Hill. And it's one of those places I've always thought I should do at some point. So today seemed the ideal day. Because when I, if I'm going to drive it of a distance like I did today, see a steam train, I like to find something interesting, perhaps not to do with trains, to do as well. So, hence the reason we're now walking up St Anne's Hill. So, all the way up here we're going to go and uh, find St Anne's Hill Park. I'm just coming towards the top of St Anne's Hill to the point where the road carries on that way. We're going to go up there. There's a big Art Deco house here called St Anne's Court. You can just see it behind the gate. It's very interesting to go and have a closer look but it's all private so we can't. We're going to go up here now. So if you wanted to come by car you could, I could have parked up here but um, I parked down near the Abbey so I wouldn't have such a long walk to the station so I could see the train come up here and I'll walk back. Uh, but if you wanted to come just here then uh, you could drive your car up to here. So I'm going to go up 
past the car park and um, see what we can find. There's remains of an old hill fort, so more earthworks. There's not so many fragments of ruin or more fragmentary ruins and earthworks in this video. So I'm looking forward to finding more of that as we make our way up to the top of St Anne's Hill. So just see past these cars. It's not a big car park and um, we're going to make our way up there. There's remains of a well. It's a bit of a mysterious place. One of the first Catholic churches in the area in the 1850s was built up here. Um, it was originally private but then it was open to all the other Catholic worshippers as there was no Catholic church down in Chertsey but now there is. So I'm going to make my way through here. So it's a public footpath. So it says St Anne's Hill Nature Trail and there's a map so I'm going to explore all around here and uh, see what I find. I'm now walking through the footpaths of St Anne's Hill, opening out into this clearing. This is all very nice, a big variety of trees. Got oak trees, got a couple of Wellingtonias, a few coniferous trees, um, various pine trees. This is a really nice place, I don't know why I've never come here before. We've still got the hill fort to have a look at. What we're also going to do is try and see if we can find a site of an old chapel because the hill, the name of the hill comes from St Anne's Chapel which was here in about 1334. I believe there was a possible connection with the abbey. There might have been a tunnel between the two but I don't know if anyone really knows that. So it's um, got quite an interesting history. I know we're not talking quite as far back as the abbey's history but we're talking a long time ago. This is interesting. Um, what I'm trying to work out, so there's clearly benches and that down there. I'm assuming that's not someone's garden, that's part of the public park. I don't want to just go running down in someone's garden, I think it probably is part of the park. Um, this is interesting, it feels like you're in a stately home with these balustrades here. So um, it's a very interesting place. There is also a reservoir in the middle, so we probably won't be able to see that. I'm pretty sure that's a public park down there. Um, because I can see people walking around. They don't look as though it's their garden. So I've got to find my way down here, but this is really nice up here. And there's also a well, which I'll tell you more about the well when we find it, but I really am exploring this as I do the video. So I've not been here before and done a recce. I'm, I'm showing you this as I discover it. So I want to find my way down there now. I think I found my way down to this uh, vast open space that we looked down from above. Here we are. We were up there. See where the big Wellingtonia tree is? We were just up behind there. But let's just have a little look around here. I wonder if there's another way I can get up. I could have kind of come straight down the sides of the cliffs, but um, I didn't. I thought it'd be a bit dangerous and, you know, I just thought I won't. There's an interesting, there's a pond over here. So we'll have a look at that and then we'll walk round to directly below where we were a moment ago. There's a pond full of big branches. It looks as though this possibly was all rhododendrons and it's all been cut back um, because rhododendrons are an invasive species. It's a bit of a, a bridge there, some sort of bridge across there. So whether this was part of, um, I don't know, some sort of grotto or garden folly, if anyone knows more, you know, do feel free to comment and tell me. Some interesting things here. We've got a tree It's obviously died, possibly been struck by lightning, not a lot of it left. Have a look at this tree. This is something um, quite interesting to see. It looks like it's fallen over. Well, it obviously has fallen over. They've removed the tree itself. But what we get to see here is underneath all the roots. So you don't normally see that. That's really quite nicely preserved. That's pretty cool. I like that. I don't know if it's intentionally meant to be a sculpture, but it kind of acts like one. That's pretty cool. I wonder how long ago that fell over. Again, if you know, do comment and tell me. And look at that well and tone, it's huge. One thing I've always found fascinating about well and tone is, I'll show you now, they, well they're huge to start with, like really huge. In America they're maybe even bigger. This, this bark is very soft and it's actually fireproof. They used to put it in fireproof doors. And I remember one day I was volunteering with the National Trust um, about 10 years ago and um, the person in charge told me it was fireproof. And I said, but surely, I said, look, it's all sort of flaky. Surely it would catch fire. He got a cigarette lighter out, tried to set fire to it, and it just burnt out. So 
if imagine a big forest somewhere I don't know what part of America they grow to so I'm not going to try and guess the state but just imagine somewhere in America if there was a forest fire these trees would protect themselves which is um, you know one of those natural phenomenons really that's where we were we were up there so what I've got to do now is uh, find my way up there I walked all the way around there gradually getting lower so I came to those steps I'm going to go back up there I'm going to find another way up there and then we're going to go and look for this well possibly a chapel and hopefully see some views this is a very pleasant peaceful woodland all I can hear is the sounds of the birds singing I can just about hear the motorway in the background it's surprising how close we are and um, how you sort of don't notice the motorway you've got the M3 over there and the M25 is just down there here's one of the viewpoints I'm thinking the motorway must be almost below us that you don't see it which is quite nice so the viewpoint allows us to just look straight over probably looking that way out towards Virginia water the crown estate etc see they've cleared the trees so we get a nice view and then I'm assuming this earthwork you can see here and here let's just have a look this way these earthworks probably are the hill fort I was saying about so my plan is now to follow my way down through this earthwork see what we find and hopefully find the nuns well and um, various other viewpoints so I'm just going to continue down through here and see what I find I'll just come around the corner from the well and look it opens out into this huge beach cathedral and we're on a sort of ledge on the hill so you've got the hill going along one side and looking down there I can just see the M3 down let's just have a look over the edge of it looks like there's a quarry here there's a huge drop just in front of me here I'm not going to go down there but look at that it's a pretty impressive space this I just can't believe I've never been here before all the time been to Chertsey looking at the path now going across there it almost looks like it's part of a mountain railway or it reminds me perhaps of the children's railway running through the Buda Hills just um, you know the railway track holding on to the side of the hill but um, it's not a railway line it's just a path so I'm going to continue on round here and um, go back up the hill a bit higher and hopefully get some even more interesting views out over well Surrey West London towards Staines etc as for talking about getting up to the top of the hill that is where I'm aiming for is a beacon up there so I've come quite a long way down the hill but you know it was worth it because I wanted to see the well so I'm just going to follow this path along here I can hear an aeroplane just heard an aeroplane taking off from Heathrow Airport and still got the noise of the motorway but if you forget about all this it's a really really nice wooden but I need to make my way to the top now and uh, have a look at the views I've just zigzagged my way back to the top of the hill into another nice clearing with a variety of trees the reservoir must be over there, there's an area, it's all fenced off. And here is the beacon, which we could see. So probably when, say, um, you know, they used to communicate via lighting beacons, this would have been one of them. There probably weren't all these hills and they'd have lit this beacon and then the next one would have lit and so on. Well, that's some view looking out there. Now, whether the camera's picking it out probably isn't, I'm just here playing taking off from Heathrow Airport. I can see the lakes, which somewhere down there is Fort Park. Um, I thought we'd see the roller coasters of Fort Park. They must be just that way slightly, but clearly in the middle of the scene. Um, as I said, it's a shame the camera isn't peed out, but I can see Terminal 5 at Heathrow and um, the control tower. So that's the view you get. If you do want to see it for yourself, like I said, do walk up here. You'll see it much better than the camera's showing you, but to give you an idea. So we were walking down there, down that path. We, I zigzagged my way up, got to here. As I said, there's the beacon. I'm going to now head that way, hopefully find some more earthworks of the old fort, and then I'm going to make my way back down the hill, back down to Chertsey. I can just, there's the sirens coming out on camera. There's just the M3 um, is literally just down there. So, 
Time to start making my way back down St Anne's Hill. I'm now standing on a big log of a fallen cedar tree, I believe this one is, certainly a um, coniferous tree. It's what tree it surrounded by elms everywhere. Elm trees. It's um, A lot of people believe that elm trees don't exist anymore. Well, they do in this form. They don't grow particularly high because the beetle attacks them. Now, if you have a look at the leaves, you can just see these little lumps on them. Well, unfortunately, I think that means the beetle has started to attack. So these will never grow to be big trees like these oak trees are. There are still some parts of the UK where Dutch elm disease hasn't yet taken full effect. Um, Brighton used to be good, um, not so sure now. Cornwall, Essex, you might see elm trees. So this is really, these are quite big, these elm trees, so I'm quite pleased to see them. You often see elm trees in hedgerows, but you don't so often see them out in the woods. Um, they might grow to, you know, well, actually, look, there we are. Is that one? Yeah, see, unfortunately, this one here, that one's already died. So that, that's done quite well to get that high, but um, I don't think we'll ever see elm trees like these grand old oaks. And uh, there's a chestnut tree there as well. That's the tree I was just standing on. There's somewhere around here, it does say on the map that there's the remains of St Anne's Chapel. Now, I'm not sure if that's the original one, dating from around... 1300s or if this is the 1850s chapel but I've not seen any evidence of that so either it's there is no fragments left or I've completely missed it and I might be yet to find it if, if I have already missed it then you know do comment tell me and maybe I'll have to come back another day if I have missed some exciting ruins a lot more Wallantonia's this way it's really nice opens out into big area that's the reservoir through that gate so that's private so we can't go down there I think, yes, yes, we're back to, um, I can see just over there, that's where we look down into the dell, which I then had to find my way down into. So what I think I'll do, if I head this way, we might find some of the earthwork. So this earthwork here, all well, this must be part of the Iron Age fort. It must have been a very big fort in its day. Um, so, yeah, the, the shape of the hill isn't really natural, but it's been in this shape for so long. That that's how it's kind of ended up as it is let's have a look just up here in front of us um, this this must be it looks like it's been layered at some point so I'm not entirely sure but um, this is possibly the edge of the old hill fort I'm gonna make my way along this path out of here and head back down to Chertsey I've come back down to the dell just to conclude my visit to St Anne's Hill. It's um, a very interesting place, a bit mysterious. Um, I, think, I think there have been possible paranormal, paranormal investigators coming here. So it's a bit, a bit of a weird place, but quite nice. Um, it's funny because when I was walking around up there, I kept seeing people. Whenever I've come down here, it's been completely deserted. So a um, bit weird, but that's probably just the timings. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video from Chertsey Abbey, Chertsey and St Anne's Hill. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from the Dell, just below St Anne's Hill, thank you very much. Goodbye.